Okay, here is a new to me uh, pedestal grinder. Picked it up this morning with the help of a friend. I bought it from uh, an auction locally, bid online, and uh, surprisingly I, I won. Fairly sensible price. As you can see, it's had a bit of a hard life. I don't know the make or model, but this is something that I'll have to investigate as time uh, as time progresses. As far as I know, it came from a working environment. So, as you can see, it's had a bit of a hard life. Safety guards are all smashed up. This one's not as bad, but still, still broken. So at some point, I'll have to replace those. Looks like they are 10 inch wheels. Obviously I'll, uh, I'll take those off and have a, have a look at them. The, uh, there is one small bit of a concern and that's with this wheel here. And it looks like when it's been moved around and shipped, the, uh, the rest here has been pushed. Maybe it's been banged up against something and it's actually, the rest here is actually pushing against the wheel, the, uh, neither of them turn. So I think um, I'll need to just loosen that off and pull it back. However, that wheel there may need replacing. Um, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take it off and uh, give it the ring test. But uh, on the whole, it doesn't look too bad. It's, um, it's 415 volts, so I'll need to check the motor, see if it can be configured to work on 240 volts. Uh, it's three phase, obviously. Now I do have I do have a spare VFD which would probably drive this. So a little bit of investigation, uh, investigation work. Now this box on the back is obviously it's an aftermarket uh, add-on, and as far as I can tell, it's just to power the lamp. It takes the uh, it takes the main the main three phase in. And according to the sign there, it's 50 volts BC, which I'm assuming was meant to be 50 volts DC. Um, again, I won't know any more until I've had a chance to take that box apart, look at the wiring, have a look at the motor. So that's what I'll be doing uh, later today. Okay, so I've taken off the two safety guards. And I've removed or pulled back the this rest. Just loosened those two bolts there and pulled it back. And uh, the wheels now turn freely. So that's not too bad. At least there isn't any other damage elsewhere. However, before I power this thing up, obviously I will be checking these wheels for any damage. You can see there where it's just made contact with a bit of the uh, with a bit of the rest. It feels fairly smooth. So. Hopefully it, the uh, the main running gear should be in fairly good condition, but obviously I'll need to give it a good clean and a, a strip down first before I uh, even contemplate applying any power. Okay, so the uh, covers off on the electronics cabinet, and as you can see, there's a there's a fair amount in there. Let's just go through the the flow. So this is the the feed coming in here. This is the three phase, and that goes we have the uh, the earth and we have the three phases there that goes through um this isolation switch here and we then have the three phases coming back out going all the way through into this contactor the these two phases here are also taken off as you can see there's there's a single wire on this one and then there's doubles on that and that goes up and goes into this isolation transformer. So that takes the 415 in, and according to this, it gives out 24. So it's 24 volts DC. Oh, sorry, 24 volts AC. It's just an isolation transformer. And that is fed into this block here and used by this cable here, goes to the buttons on the front. And the other cable, as you can see, if I can get a bit closer, this other cable here is the one for the motor. So we have the contactor that makes the, that's basically it's a, a fancy relay that um, in a combination of, of, of wiring means that when you press the green button, which is uh, the go 
Uh, that's a low voltage that engages the solenoid in here, which turns it on. Then the, the feed is passed through. This module here, by the way, is a, I believe, looking at that number, is a thermal cutoff switch. So the motor is powered through there. Then you've also got these normally closed contacts here. And that loops back. So once you press that green button that starts, that engages the contactor, it then closes the, the circuit back on itself so it stays engaged. And that also is fed through the stop button. So as soon as you hit that stop button, the red button, it closes or it, sh it, it opens that circuit. The contactor no longer has the 24 volts needed to engage the solenoid and it turns off. So it's kind of a, it's a toggle switch. You have two buttons as a toggle. The green one makes the initial close, which engages the solenoid. The solenoid then, because it's closed, can then engage itself. So it stays latched on. As when you press the red button to stop, it closes it. So what am I going to do with this? Oh, we've also got the motor down here. So I think you can just, just about make it out. Three phase. It is a 240 volt motor as well. So you can see it does, does 220 and it does 380 to 400. So, or 420. And it is 750 watts. So that makes it something like a 0.3 horsepower motor. So one of the things I could potentially do is power this using a VFD. The only issue is contactors and VFDs don't work particularly well. They have a tendency to trip the VFD because you suddenly have a sudden surge of, um, of power as, as everything engages and the motor starts up. The other option is to replace the motor with a single phase uh, 230 or 220 volt uh, motor of similar spec. And that means I can basically get rid of most of this. I'll keep the contactor in, um, but power it in a slightly different way. Um, that is probably the option I will go with because it's the easiest. It saves having to connect a VFD and then trying to work out the best way of doing it. Now, I could um, get rid of the contactor and then power the motor direct from the VFD and then use the low voltage side on the VFD to control the start and the stop. That would give me speed control, but it's a waste of a VFD, I would argue. Um, if anyone thinks that's wrong, then feel free to tell me. However, um, I think all of this can be replaced as well as the motor with a single phase uh, 220 volt uh, system including the, the light on the top, and it will make installation and operation a whole lot easier. So I think I'll stick with that. So I've just had a rummage around, um, it was hiding over there, but I've found this motor. Let's see if we can get in there for a closer inspection. Um, source unknown, however, it's, it is made by Hoover. However, it's 220 volt. It's also a third of a horsepower, and it's about the same size, as you can see. So I think with a little bit of um, playing around, I can get this motor mounted in there. So hopefully we should be able to uh, con convert this to a, a mains device. Okay, taking the uh, side off here so you can see the wheel. The um, the wheel is currently, let's switch to, what are we? We are about nine inches. However, I'm guessing if you, if you go from the, the center of the spindle here, go from the center of the spindle and go as high as you can before you hit the, uh, the inside, you're looking at um, a good five inches. So I, I'm willing to bet that these wheels are uh, or oh, this, this device is meant to take 10 inch wheels. Um, it can't take 12 inch because it will foul up on the top. So 10 is the nearest, nearest one. 
So you can see also down inside that um, it's also probably never been cleaned out. It's absolutely caked with dust and uh, grinding material. So one of the other things that I'm tempted to do is, I know you, if I just rotate it back around on the back of each here, there's two uh, sort of extraction points. So I'm tempted to work out some kind of uh, dust extraction mechanism that I can uh, I can tie in. So this could potentially join up with the uh, the one from the uh, surface grinder. And uh, I do actually have buried away down here a vacuum that came with the uh, that came with the surface grinder. So what I might do is work out some method of sort of joining these all together, so I can uh, I can get rid of the uh, all of the uh, the grinding material. But anyway, there we go. So it's um, it's a fairly good device for the price I paid. I'm more than happy with it. Needs a little bit of work, obviously. Replace the motor, do redo the wiring. But um, yeah, on the whole, I'm quite impressed, quite pleased. Thanks for watching.